Very excited to welcome in our next guest. He is a Super Bowl champion back in Super Bowl 17, 12 year NFL veteran, and an MVP of the league. It is the great Joe Theismann. Joe, thanks so much for joining us here. How are you this morning? I'm good. Good morning to you. Good morning to you as well. So, Joe, I'm curious because you and the Chiefs have a lot in common. Yourself, back in Washington, went to back to back Super Bowls. Obviously, you won Super Bowl 17. Chiefs won the Super Bowl last year. Now they are in the Super Bowl again this year. Maybe a dumb question, but I'm curious from a player's perspective. Does Super Bowl experience mean anything? Does it give you any sort of advantage kind of knowing what to expect from one year to the next, or is that kind of overblown? No, I don't think it's overblown, and it's, a, it's really a great question because this year is so different. Normally, you'd have the two weeks. You'd have to deal with your family traveling. You'd have to deal with tickets. You'd have to deal with media commitments. Now, because of the pandemic and because of the controls regarding COVID, there is so much more limited exposure to all of those different elements. So really, you basically get a chance to really focus on football. Now, you know, is it too much time? That's the question. I know the first Super Bowl we played in, we only had one week to get ready. So it was like, I guess, almost a normal week of practice. Mm -hmm. Traveled on Monday, uh, took a little bit of time on Tuesday, and then went to our normal practices the rest of the week and then played the game against Miami. The second Super Bowl, Super Bowl 18 down here in Tampa, was a different story because we had the two weeks. You had all that time. And I had a great practice on Thursday. I wish we could have played on Thursday. I think the outcome <laughs> would have been different. But uh, as, it tur- as it turns out, um, it just the Friday just wasn't as sharp. Saturday wasn't as sharp. And I didn't play worth a darn on Sunday. You know, it's that one shot at the, at the big, big ring. It's not like any other major sports, basketball, baseball, hockey. Uh, all of those are seven game series. You have one shot here in football, but the big thing is mentally you have to stay in focus for the entire period of time during these, the, during these two weeks. And I think it's a little bit easier now for the guys not having all the distractions. That's interesting. I didn't even think about that. To your point, you think like maybe two weeks are, you can kind of give yourself a break and prepare more, but it's interesting. Like you said, it's almost, you got to pace yourself both physically and mentally because you can have a great practice early on in the week and you're still a week and a half away. Um, yep. Does that you give? know you're basically oh. you're basically preparing yourself um, all season. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're not going to Kansas City's not going to change a whole lot of what they do. Tampa's not going to change a whole lot of what they do. They may give you some different looks on defense. They may bring some different pressures, uh, but you'll know that after the first quarter. Right. You know, it's really what it's really what each team does well is what's going to get them to where they want to get to. Does that extra time give anyone an advantage? Obviously, these two teams played Blazers back in Week 12. Obviously, as we know, Andy Reid, a genius off the bye. Todd Bowles now, defensive mastermind, really is getting the defense playing well. Is that extra time either give Andy Reid an advantage because he has more time to prepare or Todd Bowles an advantage in your mind to kind of figure out how to slow down this Chiefs offense? I think, I think it's a saw-off. I don't think it okay. goes one way or the other um, as far as that goes. I really don't. So I'm curious, too, because now you look at the Chiefs, and – Really, I mean, this is a big storyline that I feel like maybe he's not getting enough attention as it should. They're missing both their starting tackles. Obviously, Mitchell Schwartz has been out for a while, the right tackle, and then they just lost Eric Fisher in the AFC title game against the Bills. So they'll be out with their starting tackles. Obviously, we, as we saw, especially in the NFC title game, the Buccaneers got after Aaron Rodgers, pressured him. So I'm curious, you're, you, from a quarterback perspective, from an offensive-minded perspective, when you're missing two of your tackles, what can either Andy Reid do to limit that? What can Patrick Holmes do to try to limit the impact and try to slow down these Tampa Bay Buccaneer pass rushers? Our business is a next man up business. Mm-hmm. Um, I think as far as the tackles, like you say, they were without the right tackle for a while. Mm-hmm. So Eric Fisher goes down, uh, you know, last last week. So here's the scenario. I don't think they're going to be able to run. Kansas City's not going to be able to run the football against Tampa Bay, and I don't think they're going to try. I think this, you know, you, what happens is the tackles are just going to have to get in front of people. Uh, you know, uh, Pierre Paul didn't practice yesterday. So you don't know exactly what's going on with him. Antonio Brown has a back. I think both of them will play. I think that's mm-hmm. just a, you know, that's just a little smoke screen going on <laughs> right now. Playing a little, you know, this is now you see me now you don't. Right. Kind of think. <laughs> but um, I, I just, I really think that Patrick has the ability to escape better than anybody in football. And then you, you're still dealing with Kelsey. Now, the other thing that Andy will probably want him to do, especially early is get the ball out of his hands. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, get back. You'll see quicker routes. I mean, let's face it, you know, you get the Tariq, Tariq had 200 yards uh, receiving in the first quarter last yeah. time these teams played. So, you know, you get the ball in his hand. He's got to feel pretty confident about what's going on. So you get the ball out of the hands, get and then make somebody miss. All of a sudden, it's not five, it's 50. 
Oh, so to- I, totally. You know, to me, to me, the tackles are important if you mm-hmm. were going to try and run the ball. But I don't think in the pass game it's quite that important because of Patrick's ability. Very interesting. We're talking to Super Bowl 17 champion at Theisman7 on Twitter. It is the great Joe Theisman. So, Joe, I'm curious, as a quarterback yourself, when you watch Tom Brady, now he's in his 10th Super Bowl, he's already won six, going for number seven. <laughs> no. what, what feelings come to – is it like – I don't want to say jealousy, but it's like you see this guy just not get lucky, but it's like he, he's here all the time. Is it amazement? Is it jealousy? What's the feeling when you watch Tom Brady get to yet another Super Bowl? It's admiration. Mm. It is. Uh, I just admire him so much. Um, and, and, you know, it, it speaks volumes to the type of preparation he puts in, the type of person he is, the love of the game, the passion for the game. And, and, and here's, here's the kind of teammate he is. Um, last week after they won the NFC, cha- or two weeks ago after they won the championship, um, he's standing at the microphone and everybody's asking him a bunch of questions. He turns and he says, look, you know, I know you have a lot more questions, but we got some like, great teammates are here. Ask them some questions. So Bruce Arian steps up. If Tom wasn't there to, to be in the spotlight, you know, you know why Tom's playing this game? Really, I, I believe this 100%. Tom is playing this game for all those guys who have never had a chance to have the ring. This is, this is important to him, but it's not important to his legacy. You know, to win a seventh ring is, is great, but so was five, six, and five and six. But I, he's doing this. He wants to play his ass off. I'm sorry, his rear end no. off. <laughs> uh, he, he wants to play his rear end off for the guys that are there now. He, you know, this was all about going to Tampa to get them right where they are. That's why he went there. This wasn't about Tom Brady uh, trying to accomplish anything else. He doesn't need to. He's the greatest that ever played the game. This game, is, this game has no relevance on where, he, where he's going to be thought about as a quarterback in the National Football League. But this is about his teammates, and that's what I love about him. Obviously, he has six. They're all, you know, 28 to three comeback against the Falcons. He has a lot of impressive, uh, just an incredible resume. I'm curious, going to a new team in a, in a pandemic year, if Tom Brady and the Buccaneers do win this game, is this the most impressive career accomplishment he's ever had, do you think? I think so. I, I really do. I, and not only him, but I think the team, Bruce Arians, and another guy that, that's just benefited so much is Byron Leftwich, the offensive mm-hmm. coordinator. Imagine being able to spend an entire year as an, a, a coordinator, a play caller, with Tom Brady, not for Tom Brady, but with Tom Brady. What, what an education, what an opportunity he had. It is, and he's benefited. He's absolutely benefited. Like I said, he's seamlessly made the transition. We're talking to Joe Theismann, Super Bowl winner. Two more questions for you, Joe. I'm curious here, because you just mentioned before in your answer about Tom Brady, called him the greatest of all time. That's not an argument, not really a debate, not you know a hot take at all. Everyone agrees that. But I'm curious, looking ahead, right? And this is obviously a tough to project because – Injuries happen, all things happen. But if, if we assume Patrick Holmes stays on the level he's at right now, continues for the next, let's say, 10 or 15 years on a similar trajectory, but he doesn't reach Tom Brady in terms of Super Bowls. Even if he loses this game, Brady is seven. Let's say Mahomes finishes with five. Is it possible in your mind to consider someone the greatest of all, of all time if they don't have the most championships? No, no, I don't think so. And, okay. and it, isn't because, it isn't because of championships that I think Tom is the greatest of all time. What I look at is the fact that he has, he has been at this level with so many different combinations of people. How many wide receivers has he thrown to? How many offensive line combinations? So there, something like 27 different running backs. I mean, if, if you take a look at what he has done with so many different people, that's what makes him great, the greatest to me. I mean, if you have, this, if you have the same people around you, uh, you build a core mm-hmm. and you, uh, you, know, you, you basically know one another and that moves along. For Tom, every year is a learning experience. It's a learning experience for the guys he's thrown to, and it's a learning experience for the guys um, that he that are trying to figure out what he does. That's interesting. That's a great point. You, you said it's some, especially with the way Bill Belichick and the, and the Patriots manage their salary cap. Like you said, it's it's almost nobody he's handing the ball off to. No one he's throwing the ball to, and he makes the guys. That's interesting to think that that's the reason why he's the greatest. I like that perspective. Um, we'll finish on this, Joe, because you were at the Super Bowl last. Year. You saw Patrick Holmes and the Chiefs win their first. They are back now again, second Super Bowl in a row. I'm curious your thoughts. Do you think, can you foresee a dynasty being built here? Win or loss for the Chiefs? I don't, you know, dynasties in this day and age are so hard because mm-hmm. you have salary caps, you have injuries. You can't keep a team together. Back in the 80s, 49ers, uh, the Washington football team that I played for, the Giants, there was a period of time where you'd go four, five, six years. You know, we, we went to three Super Bowl, four Super Bowls in an 11-year period. I think you can. I think teams are going to go through peaks and valleys. 
Uh, economics is going to play a big part because you can't pay everybody. Injuries certainly play a big part of where you wind up. Um, I, I think that what you have to do is enjoy the moment now. Capitalize on the opportunity now and not worry about a year from now or two years from now or five years from now. I almost forgot to ask Joe, who are you picking? Are you taking the Chiefs or is Tom Brady getting the seventh Super yep. Going Chiefs. Going Chiefs, yep. Uh, Patrick, I think, is going to have himself a magical day. I, uh, I am with you there. Hard to pick against them. Joe Theismann, a Super Bowl champion yourself. You know what it takes to get to the big game and win. We do appreciate your time and enjoy the game on Sunday. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.